present he is in this moment. Amen? Amen. Amen. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says this. Hallelujah. As soon as I find 2 and 5, there we are. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. And the message title today is The Between Position. Say that with me, The Between Position. Between position. Thank you. You may be seated. Oh, hallelujah. Last Sunday, I had the privilege of being at ADM instead of being here. I say it as a privilege, but I'm, I'm working on getting myself out of that situation. I've even told the plant manager, I says, you know what? The next ship I see that comes by, I'm, jump, I'm jumping on it. <laughs> I, did, I didn't put it that way. See, there's a job opening up in the elevator soon, okay? And I can see myself going that direction. But you know what? Hey, it's good that we want to make decisions for ourselves. But who has the final decision? So if he would turn the tides and wants me to stay exactly where I'm at, it's just weird how he has a way of steering a ship. I go to third shift. This ain't the message, but we'll get right back to it. I go to third shift to try to escape a situation for 10 years. I get... Uh, a sickness in my body to where I start passing blood, uh, lots of it, that requires me to get on a five-day rotation instead of a seven-day rotation, and I'm put back in the exact place I left 10 years earlier. So I've learned this, that not every situation in life I'm probably going to smile and grin about, but I will know this. <laughs> He's got the ways of placing you exactly where he needs you to be. Amen? Amen. So, but the between position, the between position is taking us to the revealing or the revelation of the one that we live for. And you'll say, so that's what all this between area is, this being born, the between area and the dying, and that is so that we can get to know our creator on this side of the veil. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, hallelujah. Matthew 17, we're going to turn there. Oh, hallelujah. Normally I print these out, but I think somebody was praying against me this morning. They wanted a real short service. <laughs> and I'm telling you right now, I just, I was struggling this morning. I said, Lord... I said, what's going on here? So I didn't have time to print out nothing, but it's okay, though. We're going to get on through this. Amen? Amen. Matthew 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart and, the, and was transfigured before them. That means he changed how he looked. He, he may have went up there looking like Jesus just in, a, in the same old robe and the same old sandals, but he transformed himself in front of them so, and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was like, excuse me, was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. And then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. And while he yet spake, behold, a white cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them saying, Tell the vision to no man. You want to talk about one of the hardest things that Jesus could ever ask you to do is to keep something to yourself something that you want to share because you've never experienced this at all in your life, ever, ever, ever in your life. He only took three of them up there. 
But he's, what he's trying to do is he's trying to explain to them a between position. And they don't know what they're being explained about. He's getting them to show that, hey, what you're seeing in front of you ain't always going to be. And I have more in my package than what you can even dream that's available. And so they just got to peek a very quick glimpse into the between of where Christ was and what he came for and what he was going to accomplish on this side of glory, amen? And they didn't even understand that, you know, hey, we need to make some tabernacles. <laughs> we need to, no, 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 no. Because see, the first thing that normally comes to a fleshly mind is going to be completely wrong, okay? You almost want to dismiss the very first thought that comes to your mind if it's of flesh, amen? Because there will be a voice that will come <laughs> after that fleshly voice that said, behold, this is my son. This is my son. This is in whom I'm pleased with right here, okay? If you got a weight in your life and you're in that in-between position and you're hearing all kinds of voices speaking to you right now, there is gonna be a voice that will come and it will be the voice of the Lord and it will give you directions for this time in your life, amen? And, he, and that voice speaks to the between Position. See how all this message even began in my mind was they put Christ up with two other thieves and they placed him in an in-between position. You have two of them there and I realize it can represent a lot of different things and, and one, he died the same way he went up and another one, I, I believe he had a little change of heart because he knew that he belonged there and he deserved that punishment but he said, you know, hey, remember me. Remember me when you come into your kingdom there, bud. I, there, there may be more to you than what I can see right here. And if, if in that case, maybe this is my chance to get some things right. Amen? But they placed him right between the in-between position. Let's turn to the book of Acts, if we could, please. Acts 10. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Acts 10. And Acts 10 and 9 says this, And on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he began, excuse me, and he became very hungry. And he would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and the creeping things and the fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, said, Rise. That voice, I don't know if you remember two weeks ago when there was that lame man and, and he was at that, at that pool and he didn't have a way to get in and we talked about how the whole healing occurred when he said rise. So he's telling Peter here, he says rise. Peter kill and eat. But Peter said not so Lord. Now I don't know where you're at with Jesus Christ today but I can, I can give you some recommendations from the in between that I'm at right now that if you know that you've heard the voice of God speak to you, I probably would choose my words a little bit more carefully than not so, Lord, okay? Because, see, he's very persuasive in his manners and his, and his ways. And you'll say, well, how do you know that he knew that it was the right voice? Friend, he, he's knowing one thing right now in this whole trance that he's at. He's never been in this place before. He has never seen this before in his life and it's only on, almost acting like it's contrary to all his prior beliefs and understandings that he had up to that day and sometimes everything that you thought you understood and you recognized will come to a day where it takes on a brand new shape and a brand new form and you'll say to yourself I, have, I haven't been this way before this is all brand new to me 
And it's how you deal with that brand new situation is having a yay in your mouth versus a no, Lord, no, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord, for I have not eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again and said a second time. Now here's what you call mercy because it could have been a one and a done deal. Have you ever talked to people before and, and you gave them a chance and they didn't hear you? And you said, you know what, I already talked to them one time before and, and they didn't hear me, so I'm just, hey, it's a one and done. But see, mercy always seems to give that second chance, doesn't it? And the voice spake unto him again the second time. And what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. See, the problem Peter was having was he didn't understand the cleansing that had already been taking place. He had looked at the situation and those that had came to the party on top of the blanket as about as unclean as unclean gets. But see, he didn't understand the process of what God does when he cleans a vessel. Do you and I know what happens in the process of when God cleans a vessel? Think about your own self for just a moment right there. Close your eyes with me if you would, please. Just think about your own life and think about all the chapters he's taken you through and how he's cleansed you through each one of those chapters. And you'll say, you don't understand the chapter I'm in right now, Brother Thorne. I can assure you, cleansing is on his mind. He knows how to cleanse you in this chapter. You can open up your eyes again. So what I'm trying to say here is the, the between position is not always an understood position. It's a position to where you know that you've been born again and you haven't passed from this life to the next. But it's that in-between of what are you doing right now, dear God? And I want to be able to see everything that you have cleansed and that you have not called common. Everything that you have made whole, dear God. Let me view it like you view it and let me see it like you see it, God, because it's really important to my salvation. It's important to my mind so I don't go crazy as that I can see what you've cleansed and that what you've made whole. Amen? Anybody hear me today? Because, see, you'll keep looking at it as it's unclean and it's, it's uncommon and God has already cleansed it. But, see, you haven't got, you haven't got a few more chapters thereof because you're right here in, in the in-between and the in-between's telling you all I can draw from is what I know. All I can rely on is what I know because it has not yet been revealed to me. But he's wanting to take you to that revealing stage of himself. He is wanting to show you the next page. He wants to paint that picture for you that says, you know, you view it as this. But this is exactly how I see it, Brother Thornton. Friend, if you've ever been in that place of what we call the between position. To where you know that you know that you know that this situation, it doesn't smell right, it doesn't look right, it's not acting right. So all you got is to go back from the past and say, this is how I need to deal with this situation. And he says, let me, let me show you how I cleanse something. And let me show you how I deal with something. And how when I touch something, you don't have to go back from the past and deal with it from there. You can deal with it in my glory, in my understanding, and in my purpose because the in-between that I came to fulfill, that can be in you. It can live in you. It can thrive in you if you want it to. Close your eyes with me, please. Just put one hand up and, I, and just say this to the Lord. I want to see everything that you see, God. Give me the grace to understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. But see, a covenant is that between position area. See, he gave Abe a promise long before the revealing took place. You want to talk about a confused man at times. You know, you got a situation here, Abe. You've been given a promise. You didn't dream it up. You didn't make it up. You know that you know that you know you've been given a promise by God. Nobody else might have heard that voice that you heard that day. But you have heard the voice of God Almighty. 
And God Almighty says, Abe, I'm going to do this with your life. And I'm going to do this with your life. And you're going to have a son. And, hey, and I'm going to teach you some things here, Abe. And then you get into the between position. And you're thinking to yourself, I know I'm supposed to have a son. And I know a lot of time has gone by. Maybe I need to start listening to the voice of my wife. And I need to start listening to the voice of others. But see, the one voice that ushered you into the promise is the same voice that's going to reveal the promise to you. And so if you start listening to all the other voices in the in-between position, those voices can be there as a confusing voice. Those voices can be there, hey, when, when Christ himself was tempted in the wilderness, did he hear some voices come? I promise you he heard some voices come. He was hearing a language that was speaking his language because, see, after 40 days of fasting in a wilderness, you can hear some things. <laughs> you can see some things. And so he's in a position to where, guess what? He's in that in-between position, okay? The start of his ministry, okay, hasn't just quite taken place yet, but it, it, is, it is definitely the start because you're learning right then and there that, guess what? If I've got something that I can cling to. When all the world and all hell seems to have come against me, I've got my eyes fixed on something that's going to make sense and will make sense when nothing else will. Amen? You got to hear me today because to Abraham, hey, there was some stuff that was not making sense to this man. And, a, and every turn that he seemed like he was making was the wrong turn. And you'll say, but he's in that in-between position, Brother Thornton. I know he is. The time to when he, was, he had the promise spoken to him to the time that that promise was revealed is that in-between position. See, you and I was called one day. I don't know exactly when your day was. Mine was actually before February 26, 1994. But see... That day is when I got baptized. And that's the day when I really, really, really believe that things took a change for me. I had been spoken to by somebody that was in the church of all the promises of God, but now I get to step into something that's already been spoken to me. Something that said it would cleanse me and make me whole. In February 26, 1994, I went down completely hating my brother-in-law. You'll say, so you took hatred in the water? Sure did. I took a whole lot more in that water. I took a lot with me in that water. I took, I, I took a lot with me in that water. I'm not even going to tell you all the stuff, but just one thing was hating my brother-in-law with everything in me. Wanting to take a ball back to his head, and I'm not a violent guy. I've never been in a physical altercation in my life. And, and all of a sudden now my brains is saying he needs to get his just dues. He needs to get something coming. Anybody in here have somebody on their mind that says they got something, that they, they got it coming. They got it coming. Well, let, hey, you, you need a fresh dipping in his word and a fresh dipping in his water and his blood because what it'll do is it'll refresh you to know this that when I came out of that water, February 26, 1994, I loved that man like he was my own mother. And you'll say to yourself, so the water, what, what, what kind of water was it? Was it holy water? No, you don't understand. This was just water that was symbolic of a death, burial, and a resurrection in my life. I didn't even understand what I was stepping into. But I had the faith to believe this, if he brought me to it, he'll take me through it. On. And on the other side, there's a revelation. On, yep. Just wave your hand at him right now. Thank you for the revelation, Lord. Thank you for the revelation. Oh, the between position. 2 Samuel 18 and 24. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Samuel 18 and 24 says this. And David sat between the two gates. And the watchman went up to the roof over the gate of the wall and lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there's a man running alone. See, David, he's in a real bad position. 
How can he be in a bad position, Brother Thorne? He starts out in the field, okay, as just a young shepherd, just loving God. Everything in his life seems to be going really, really good. The lion comes, the bear comes, he keeps the sheep, he's singing songs, he's praising God. You're telling me from that situation right there, there can come a day to where he's got a son named Absalom who not only wants to defy his father, but wants to kill his father. And you'll say to yourself, how, how does the in-between fit all the, you're on the mountaintops singing songs to God, and then now you've got a son that came out of your own loins, and he is wanting to kill you and take over the kingship. And what the Lord was talking to me about this situation was, see, he, didn't even, he even gave the commandment to him, don't, don't touch him. I'm paraphrasing here, but he said, don't kill him. I know what he's wanting to do to me. And I know you don't understand, Joab, what he's wanting to do to me. But don't kill him. I got a relationship with this boy. This is my son. This is the one that came out of me. This is the one that I got to hold in my arms. This is the ones that I got to, got to hear when he was crying because he was hungry. I got to hear all the cries when he was an infant. Don't, don't kill him. Don't kill him. But see, Joab, he didn't, he didn't have the same in-between understanding that David did. The relationship wasn't there. So all he could see was they're defying the, Israel, the armies of Israel and they're defying the king and I'm going to kill him the first chance I get. And I believe the old boy did. But what I'm trying to say is this. Oh, hallelujah. In the in-between position, it reveals to us who my brother is and who my sister is and who my son is. And all of a sudden, when you get those desires to want to give them their just dues, then you're reminded that somebody looks at them as a son, even though you look at them as the enemy. Let that sink in real good. I don't care what they've done to you. I don't care how they've touched and hurt you and, and said all manner of everything about you. There is someone that looks at that person and says, this is my son, this is my daughter, okay? You may not understand all the in-betweens here, Brother Thornton, brother and sister and so-and-so, but let me get you to the place of revealing to where the in-between makes a whole lot more sense. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Because see, a promise spoken and a promise revealed has a whole lot of gap between it sometimes. Paul in Philippians 1 and 21. Oh, hallelujah. 1 and 21, Paul says this. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two. He's in an in-between position. Having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, you know what? There's the same nevertheless. Remember a garden? <laughs> when somebody's wanting to, to give up a cup, Somebody's saying, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, <laughs> he's got the language of the Father in his mouth, don't he? Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith. What he's trying to say is you're in the in-between. And you don't see what I see. So sometimes there has to be the people that have run up ahead that have already seen it to come back and say, you can make it. There is 
some sense to all this. There is an understanding to all this in between if you'll just make it to the revelation thereof. So in case you're in that place today of the in-between and you have not seen the revelation thereof, you may need to talk to somebody that's just ran on a little farther ahead. Get with somebody that's kind of been there and done that. Or get with the one that has been there and done it all. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. But in this life, you are born, and then you live, and then you pass from this life to the next. But that (laughs) in-between, that in-between is so misunderstood. Stand with me, please. That in-between is so misunderstood sometimes that we just almost curse the in-between. One day we're laughing about it, we're joyful, and then all of a sudden all it takes is a turning of the page and we don't even understand why, God, and, and you've put this in my life and you're trying to destroy me and you, I, don't, I don't appreciate your sense of humor and I don't, I don't love what you're doing to me right now and so for that, I'm going to treat you this way, God. I'm going to put you on the back burner in the rest of my life since I don't want to have to live in this pain no more. I'm going to live it without you. And you'll say to yourself, them words couldn't possibly come out of a Christian's mouth. If I got to be the only one honest in here today, I'll be that guy. Because <laughs> I had that come through my lips. So I said, I'm not even into this game. The game you want to play, I'm not even into it. Not understanding that there is a, there's a whole earth that groans for the manifestation. The manifestation of the sons of God. And do you think those things are just plopped off of a vine or plucked off of a tree? There's a process. There's an in-between process that takes place in you and I that just gets every square ounce of you squeezed out. And then he allows every square ounce of him to overwhelm you, overtake you, to pour from the top of your head down to the bottom of your feet and just be immersed with his purpose and his understanding. And this is why I've called you, brother and sister, and so and so. And this is why I put my love in you, brother and sister, so and so. If it was all about the love that you was born with, then you would have had enough. You must be born again. That means that you was born lack and slack of something that you absolutely have to have in this lifetime. You need him. Raise your hand, close your eyes right now. Just whisper it out of, my, out of your lips. Says, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you for the in-between. I need you for the revealing, and I need you for the understanding of everything that's going on in my life right now, dear God. And I thank you, dear God, that there's been people that have gone on before us, that have put it on paper, dear God, that have let us know, dear God, that this is not my end. This is not my end. I'm going to understand one thing. If all of my life gets turned upside down, I am not giving up on you, and I will forever have you on my lips and in my heart and on my mind. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, and amen. God richly bless you today. Don't run off. I do believe there is a baptism. Is that correct? Baptism today? Don't run off. Hey, let's usher this person right on in. Right on in. Amen. God richly bless you this day. Hallelujah.